So I made a ton of huge changes to this projectplannerai.com application, which is basically why I haven't really added that many features. I think about a week or so ago, I made a video about polling and why you can use polling on the front end to basically hit your back end and figure out when long running asynchronous processes are done. So that's what it used to do. Basically, when I were to create a plan, you had to sit here on this page for like two minutes, three minutes until your thing is finished processing. And then you can click it and actually view the results. When I say big refactoring, I did like 126 file changes. You can see all these changes here. I'll talk about those file changes in just a bit, but let's just demo this. I'm gonna say an app to help track recipes. And I'll say a dad, okay? So now when I click create plan, what's actually gonna happen is I get redirected to the plan page right off the bat. And you can see all the different sections are gonna start coming in as they finish one by one. So over here on the left, you will see these loading indicators kind of go away as these different you know, sections finished. So product names just finished. A color palette looks like it's done. So you can kind of get a good color palette for this project you're shooting for. All the features that it recommends are done now. Uh, we can go back up here to typography and we get some recommendations for that. The things that take the longest are the images and the assets. So we have some cool icons that we can use for this application. And we also have some assets. And finally, we got some designs down here. Now, I would say this is a superior user experience than what I was doing before, because right off the bat, users can like engage and see their stuff loading as it's getting finished, right? And that's really great. So in order to achieve this, I'm using WebSockets, but I decided to refactor my entire project over to use Convex. Now, I will say some of my sponsored videos on this channel were from Convex. This is not a sponsored video. This legit, like I needed to move faster with my side projects and I needed more capabilities. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of Drizzle, get rid of Postgres, and I'm just gonna use Convex. I'm gonna go all in with Convex because I do like it as a service. And as you can see, I kind of like deleted all of my server actions. I deleted all of my Drizzle stuff, all of my ORM related stuff. I deleted my database entities. It was a lot of work, a lot of changes, a lot of deletions, and I added all of the same code, but I moved it over to my Convex backend. But I do wanna diagram out like how the heck did I build this and why is using Convex, why was that a superior choice in my particular side project versus what I was doing with just Next.js and Postgres. So when a user makes a request to my create plan, in our case, I'm using something called an action, but just in general, like if you have an endpoint where a user has to hit it and create a plan, what happens, I have to basically spin up 11 different asynchronous open AI calls. Some of them generate images, some of them are just doing like a chat completions but a lot of them basically had to be wrapped with retry logic because sometimes OpenAI doesn't give you the correct JSON needed. So when you try to parse it, it just throws an error. Then what we were seeing in the previous approach to this project is that when one of these things failed, for example, if database models were to give us bad JSON, it would throw an exception. And then we had to basically write our own retry logic in that process and have it retry up to three times, five times until it finally gives us the JSON that we need. We also tried using like ChatGPT function completions, which kind of helped a little bit, but I still saw JSON parsing errors with certain things. So that's the first thing. Images also take a long time. So we really didn't want the design section to have to block a user from seeing like the results of, for example, typography, because this thing loads within like five or 10 seconds. This thing may take 30 seconds. Um, competitive analysis for whatever reason takes like over a minute to generate. So having each of these pieces generate asynchronously in send off events when they're done to the user was the approach I wanted to take. So I'm gonna to try to talk about this problem without even mentioning Convex or Next or whatever. This is just a high level overview of what needs to happen. So a user makes a request to create a plan and this plan has to run a bunch of different tasks. So I'll say like designs, um, we can do icons. We go over here, we can say database models. So this is some of the sections, not all of them, but it still highlights the issues. The user never gets a response back until every single sub process finishes. It's a bad user experience because I have to sit there for two to three minutes until everything finishes. Some of the stuff fails and it has to be retried. Okay, so when it fails, you have to retry it. And also with Next.js, there's no way to send off WebSockets, right? I would have to basically set up some type of WebSocket server, or I'd have to pay a third-party service or set up a third-party service like Pusher and basically have my API use Pusher or use my WebSocket server. Yes, there's also server-side events you could do too, but basically as these things finish, they would have to message the socket server and then that socket server would have to basically tell the user, 
color UI to basically refresh. And again, I don't want to have to spend all the time to set this up. I was using SST to deploy my app, uh, my full stack application, which means I'd probably lean towards using like API gateway for the web sockets, but I didn't want to have to do all this manual work. It's not too hard, but like, again, I don't have a bunch of time to work on side projects. So I want to move as fast as possible. Another thing that I basically had to do on my project is as these designs finish, we have to store them somewhere, right? We have to store these inside of S3 image buckets. And then the user can kind of read from those buckets as you know stuff finishes, okay? And that's just more stuff that I have to maintain. I know it's really easy to set up an SST, but again, this is AWS. This is an image bucket. I have to go make sure the policies are set up. I have to go ahead and make sure that the pre-sign get URLs are set up correctly. And this is just one extra thing to set up. So what I decided to do is I switched everything over to use Convex. The first reason is Convex has a built-in file storage. So I can just go ahead and store directly to Convex's file storage. And I don't have to worry about maintaining my own S3 bucket. I can just store directly to here. So I'll just say files storage. Now the second thing, which is probably the coolest thing of Convex, you can basically have these asynchronous tasks live as actions, right? So these are considered actions in Convex. There's also some code that Convex provides in their examples where you can basically have these actions just retry if they were to fail. So now this thing just fires off all of these actions and I can just redirect the user directly to the plan page. And as these things are finishing, they actually write their updates to this Convex database. Now, the most beautiful thing about this is that the Convex has like a live update type of database. I don't know what the real, it's called like a real time database. Is that what they call it? Where basically I don't have to use a socket server anymore. I just need to basically have my front end listen for different rows on Convex. So with using Convex, it's a real-time database. I don't have to worry about having a WebSocket server because my UI just basically binds to a query. And whenever that data that the query knows about changes, the UI is going to automatically get a WebSocket event sent to it. So I'm going to go ahead and say like automatic WebSocket updates when data changes. So for example, if the user is listening for data for plan A, and one of these things writes data to plan A, Convex automatically sends out an event to your user and that user's data is going to refresh. So I don't have to write any WebSocket code, which is absolutely makes me move fast. Second thing I want to point out is Convex has this idea of mutations, right? These are transactional things that run. And I'll just go ahead and say mutations. For example, when this key feature section were to finish, if I go down here and go to like required features, these are my key features. When this open AI call finishes, what happens is that this basically says, Hey, I need you to update the plan. So I'll just go ahead and say like update plan model. It does some, you know, a database patch or a database write or something. And this is my, uh, key feature mutation. And I'll actually rename this to plan section model. I have a section model and I have a plan model. So all these different pieces of the plan are broken up into sections. And this front end is basically doing a query to say, hey, whenever the plan or any of those sections were the change, go ahead and just update the React state and use that WebSocket event that came in, right? This is all great. Like this is awesome. And another great thing I want to point out is that I actually have in my local development branch, when someone creates this plan and let's say they don't like the key features that are generated, I'm adding a drop down button to these sections so they can click it and they can say regenerate. And what happens is that that's actually just going to invoke one of these actions directly. Okay. I don't have to call create plan. I can just say, Hey, you know what? Call this key feature action, rerun it. That's going to invoke open AI. It's going to get the data back. It's going to go ahead and run that mutation, update that one section in the plan. And then my UI just updates when this thing finishes. So you might not believe me when I say this is super easy, but this is the only code I have to write to basically have my front end automatically update and refresh when new sections are kind of generated and written to my plan. And because this custom hook basically updates react state, that's going to update the state and this thing is going to re-render. So throughout my entire front end, there's no WebSocket code. There's no like establishing a connection. There's no use effect anywhere. I just say, you know, listen to this query. And if I look at this query, all this query does is it just checks to make sure I'm authenticated. And then it does a convex query to basically get the plan based on a plan ID. And then it also fetches all of these sections and that's it. So whenever any of these sections were to change, convex sends me a WebSocket event, which basically updates this react state for me automatically. That thing gets re-rendered and we can see those changes basically update live on the page. So I think that's all I really want to share with you all. Again, this was not a sponsored video by convex. I've just reached the point where on my side project, I don't have much time. I need to iterate fast. 
I'm doing a bunch of asynchronous AI stuff and it just makes sense that I should be using Convex because it's probably one of the coolest backend as a service projects I use. It's like fully type safe. I think Firebase also has some similar functionality where like you can have real time updates when data changes. And I haven't really used Firebase to be honest with you all. Maybe that's a knowledge gap I should look into. Now, the second thing I want to mention is that I did refactor my project. Instead of using Next Auth, I'm just using Clerk. The main reason is that the Convex tutorial or the docs, they really give you two good outlines of like clerk or auth zero that you can use um, if you want to kind of roll your own with just connecting directly to the oauth providers it's a little bit more um manual work you have to figure out yourself right so i went ahead and just said you know what i'm just going to use clerk i've used clerk before i think it's a really great user experience for example this whole drop down i didn't have to do this whole security and account stuff i didn't have to create this is all provided by clerk and by the next js package that clerk has also, something that I just started doing in this project is webhooks. So when a user is created in Clerk, I have that sending webhook to my Convex HTTP endpoint. So in Convex, I can go ahead and create like a normal REST API. And I have an endpoint for Clerk. I also have an endpoint for Stripe. So when that Clerk event comes in, I basically verify it with the signature. I get the user information. I insert that into my database, right? So I have a users table over here. And as users are created in Clerk, I get that event and I can just go ahead and write this. I think that's all I wanted to talk about. I'm, we're not really sure where to take this project. We were kind of debating about maybe we should turn this into like a project management application where you can have like teams and people can upload their own ideas. Uh, people can upload their features and you can like kind of collaborate on your plan together and then just use AI to like generate additional things as needed. Yeah, we're not real too sure. So I mean, if you have any comments about like where we should take this project, because right now I think we're kind of not really sure where to go with this. I think it's a cool idea. Um, it's just, it just needs more, right? It's just not there yet. So if you do have a suggestion, leave a comment. Maybe we can use your suggestion to make this better. I think some type of real user feedback would be really great to help us focus on what we need to do next. All right, that's it. If you guys enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And also I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out and talk to some other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.